All right, friends, family, actually my family's probably not watching this, but my friends at SR Lounge, it is time to get into our five common or five primary secondary light patterns, okay? So we talked about the key light patterns, we've talked about diffusion and fill and so forth. Now let's get into secondary light patterns. Now we've talked about our key light patterns, which is that primary light. This is when we're dealing with basically a second or a third light. And I know many of you are probably thinking, Pi, this is lighting 101. We're only dealing with one light and it's just gonna be on camera light. Ah, but au contraire, mon frere. Cause we're gonna be dealing with more than one light. When you guys approach a scene, more often than not, if you're shooting outdoors, you already have lights outdoors. We want you to be able to see that light. We want you to be able to position your subject so you have a backlight, a hair light, a kicker. We're gonna use that existing light and then add one single additional light. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna find that with just one single light, you can set up a scene with maybe one light and a reflector that it looks like you have four or five lights in a scene, but really, you're just using your on-camera flash. It's all about seeing what's actually there and simply adding to it. But let's first talk about, before we get into all that craziness, our common secondary key light patterns. And for this, I need Anita once again. Anita! Ah, if Anita had a voice, well, I don't actually know what it would sound like. She looks young. It'd be a young voice. Okay, so let's just say that right now this video light from that side, that's the key light, right? It's the key light on me right now. So this is the key light. So let's talk about the first type of light, which is simply your fill light. Now in the last several videos, we talked about filling and a fill light is any light that's meant to fill into the shadows. So if I add a light simply from the shadow side, that is a fill light. Now it's all in relation. A fill is always in relation to where the key light is or where the shadows on the face are. So if the shadows are on this side, then the fill would come from this side. Now let's go ahead and use my little light panel chroma. I'm going to turn this guy on. And I'm actually gonna leave this on this blue daylight white balance just so you guys can see exactly where the light is, okay, in relation to this uh, key light on her face. So you can see in this example that if the uh, shadow's on this side, which it isn't actually in our example too because the light's coming from that side, then the fill would be on this side. Now depending on the brightness of that fill is gonna depend on how much of the shadows you're leaving versus how much of the shadow you're opening up. The more shadow you open up, the less dramatic. The less shadow you open up, the more dramatic. Okay, now going into the second one, we have a rim, uh, a kicker, or a, uh, what do we call it? Kicker, rim, or edge light. It's actually three different words for the exact same thing. Okay, so I like to call it a kicker because I think it's the coolest of those terms. I don't know, kind of sounds cool. So a kicker simply comes onto your subject from an angle and from the back, and it kind of creates that rim or that edge light, hence rim, edge, kicker, whatever you want to call it. But basically you can see in our little example of Olivia, it just comes and kind of gives the back of the face a little kiss. It kind of hits the neck, it'll hit the shoulders, and it creates that edge light. This is a great light for creating dimension to the face. Now, granted, if you're shooting a beauty type shot, it's really not the best type of a light to add. But for, say, dramatic athletic portraits or for any type of dramatic shot that you want to have, a kicker is absolutely fantastic. It adds a lot of dimension and depth to the face. So let's go ahead and show you where that light position would be in relation to Anita. Anita, body, for bad. Okay, so it would be right about here. Now, common errors with the kicker. Placing it too far to one side ends up splashing onto her face, and you can see that right there. Placing it too far back and it's no longer a kicker, it's just hitting the back of her head. So you gotta kinda get it at an angle and slide to the back, and you wanna just adjust that position so you're not getting too much light here, and you wanna adjust the power too, because typically you want it to be more on the subtle side. Again, don't mind the power here. I'm leaving the power fairly high, just so that you guys can see where the light is hitting, okay? But that is the position in relation to the subject. Now, let's go on to our third one. This is the hair light. A lot of people actually confuse the hair light with a backlight. They're actually not the same thing, okay? The hair light is simply a light that's placed directly over the hair. Again, a common mistake with the hair light is to place it too far forward, and look what happens. It splashes onto her face, and it adds a really kind of nasty light where we get these shadows, deep shadows underneath the eyes and so forth, underneath the brows. It's not good. So you wanna make sure that that's placed slightly behind and angled forward just to add some light to the hair. This is a fantastic light for adding texture to hair and also helping to separate the subject from the background. If the background is dark and the subject has dark hair, then a hair light can really help in brightening up the hair to separate it from the background. Next we have the backlight. 
the backlight would come directly behind the subject, okay? And this is where it gets confusing with a hair light because it kind of lights up the hair as well. So a backlight is placed directly behind the subject's head and it's just gonna brighten up and create kind of a backlight or an edge around the entire body. Sometimes people call this a rim light too. It really doesn't matter, guys. So long as you know what these things are doing, that's the main thing. But it basically adds this little light rim around the edge of a subject, which is again, fantastic for separating a subject from a dark background. If they're wearing a dark suit and you're shooting them against a dark background, then adding a very subtle rim will help to kind of, or sorry, a really subtle uh, backlight will help to separate them from the background. Lastly, and again, this is another one that gets confused with a backlight quite a bit. This is the background light, number five. It's not a backlight. A backlight is for your subject. It's a backlight on your subject. The background light is flipped upside down and it lights the background, okay? So any light, and right now it's lighting on my screen, but any light that's basically placed in your scene to light up the background is a background light. Now, typically, as far as lighting 101 goes, we're not gonna use background lights from our on-camera flash that much because it's really difficult to set up a background light. You'd have to bounce it like five times to get it onto the background. But we will have background lights just existing in scenes, and so I want you guys to use those. So, the one that kind of comes to my mind, actually there's several that come to my mind, anytime we're like shooting a subject over uh, like a sunset, what I often like to do is actually place my subject just directly in front of that sunset. And what ends up happening is, the sunset kind of creates a sort of background light for the subject because it essentially has this halo or this kind of brighter area right around the subject and that light right behind whoever you're shooting will add a lot of attention and draw an attention to that person. So that's a way that you can kind of find natural existing light and kind of use it similarly to a background light in the studio. But background light in the studio will come into play when we get into lighting 201 and 301 as we create kind of more advanced two, three, four light setups and so forth. All right. That's it for our common secondary light patterns. Now as we're going through and we're talking about each of these scenes and trying to recognize what we have in these scenes, well, we can describe them with the proper terms. Now one thing you guys might be thinking is, well, Pi, this is lighting 101. We're talking about secondary light patterns, which means that we would need a second light, but we only have an on-camera flash. This is the thing. With all of these lights, we can find every type of light here pre-existing in a scene. We simply have to look for it. We have to position our subject in the scene accordingly and then add flash, add our on-camera flash with a modifier to it, and we can create two, three light setups with simply one on-camera flash. That's how we're gonna create all the different shots that look dynamic. It looks like they have hair lights, rim lights, edge lights, kickers, and so forth. And in reality, all we're doing is positioning the subject in a scene that already has existing light, being very kind of just aware of that existing light and then adding our own to complement it. So let's go ahead and move to the next video now.